so let's let's uh, begin with uh, an introduction right uh, uh, what you do in new zealand at present okay so hello again guys my name is juliano baby um i am photographer um i've been in new zealand for almost 11 years uh, actually in new zealand i'm doing photography and i'm around the printing business as well um since I moved to New Zealand, I started learning about printing because I was that kind of person who needs a visa. And that's how I got my, my residency, my citizenship from this job, right? Um, yeah, I'm 41 years old and um, father of one little boy, oh. marries my, my beautiful wife. And uh, here we are again to explain a bit more about my photography journey. Right. So what kind of photography uh, do you do, Juliano? Oh, in these days, uh, um, pretty much everything. But of course, uh, as always, as every single one, you get some preference. So my one's more like uh, body human and then uh, portraits, uh, pretty much. But what I do, pretty much uh, commercial photos. Doesn't matter what, I just, you know, if I can help, I'll do my way to, to help. Right. Right. But you, you know, uh, you do action, a lot of action. Uh, work, yes, right? yes. In these days, uh, yeah, I do sports. And uh, yeah, as I said, I do everything. Um, in these days, pretty much, I sh I'm covering the whole whole range range of uh, photography because working this business for around twenty oh. years, uh, I discovered that if I tag my name or my professional photography in one side. I'm going to be losing a lot of other sites, right? And uh, the game changed to me when I moved to New Zealand that I discovered if I just try to be a commercial photographer in New Zealand, uh, I don't know for the others, but I'll be fine. So I don't know if I can say this words. <laughs> uh, and then because what I realized after only a few months in New Zealand, the market here is really small. Uh, the way that they used to shooting here was way different than we used to shoot in Brazil or America. And then I just like, okay, that's a good opportunity to reinvent myself and start like doing things that I really like to do it as a landscape. You know, I, I do enjoy the landscape a lot because that's like a therapy for me, you know, just be there, wait the right moment, find a nice composition. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, but. Yeah, commercial photography in New Zealand is a bit hard, I would say. I don't think that the people pay fair here, the, the companies pay fair. I think they kind of explore because they know that's 10 other guys that will do cheaper than you. So you have to pretty much uh, downsize your production, downsize uh, the amount of people that should be worthy for that kind of photo shoot. But this is New Zealand and, you know, I understand that's the way that I like to work. I was talking to a friend of mine, he's a Brazilian guy. He was shooting, he invited a crew to shoot in America, California, like two weeks ago. And he said, we brought to, from Brazil to America around uh, 14, 40 people, 14 professionals to work around this photo shoot. And I asked him, why don't you hire someone from America? Because he said, I know these guys. I know how capable they can do it for me. And that was the big deal. Uh, we'll never, I would say, I, I never did a photo shoot that I had to, to hire more than three, four people, right? Uh, because as I said, they don't want to pay anything that you appear as a photographer or a photography, uh, they say, yeah, that's cool. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, but I think it's, yeah, it's pro probably because it's, it's a s small, smaller market. Yeah, smaller economy. Yeah. So and and the other thing is just uh, because of the democratization of technology, you mm. have uh, the cameras are cheap, so anybody can become a photographer. So yes, I agree. I think we we spoke about this in the last podcast. Yeah. And um, but the thing is, to be a photographer, what what is to be a professional photographer? To be a photographer, anyone can be with smartphones, right? We discussed this before. To be a professional photographer, you need to understand customer, 
You need to understand the whole concept or the whole idea of the shooting. You need to know how to price it. You need to go to know how to talk with all these people around this big day. And what I see and what I saw, mainly of these people, these professionals or these, you know, photographers, um, they, they don't really know what to do it. You know, they just know that in the end they can talk to Photoshop and say, Photoshop, please help me, <laughs> you know, or hire someone to, to help, uh, save the photos. Um, sometimes people contact me, oh, can you edit my photos? And I say, yes, I can do it, but price that I'll charge you, probably you're going to pay me what they paid you, right? And right. more. Uh, that's my way. I don't say that's the right way, but that's my way. I, I don't need to save someone's name because that's all about names, you know, a brain, whatever, uh, because uh, he fuck out. And that's, that's why I understand as a photographer. So the thing is, um, as I spoke to a lot of big, uh, big photographers, people that I know, um, that's a euro that just appeared here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, just a euro and uh, quote exceeded euro. You have run out of free disk. Um, uh, okay. So uh, I hope it's still recording. Uh, yeah, so, um, what I saw was a lot of big names here, big photographers. Uh, they are really well known because they know people, and that's normal. That's everywhere, it's like this. But in terms of professionalism, uh, they still not know about copyrights and about like, um, the whole circles around this big commercial stuff. I'm talking about commercial phones, right? Uh, and the other term, the other term is I see people doing, uh, nude photos or things that they used to be before, to use to do before, but now they decide, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm not a mark that you can start exploring, but it's. Pretty much snapshots for me, snapshots that they do all the time, you know, take a girl with pretty much naked, but not full body because who doesn't like this in New Zealand. And then they will do a shot and they say, that's my sensual photo shoot. That's uh, pull up a lady with lingerie and they'll say, oh, that's a, a, a stunning photo. And that's what's, uh, for me, it's really hard to understand that we have more and better technology to help us but less quality, way less quality, you know, because people know that they can save the shooting on Photoshop. But yes, with, uh, I would say a good knowledge in printing, I can see straight away if this photo came all right when they shoot or they have mm -hmm. to edit the photos because all the aberration chromatic that appear is always came from Photoshop or from some sort of like software. Right. Um, yeah, that's, uh, um, that's, I think it's the big problem here. People, they, it, not just here, I mean, Brazil, America, no one teach you how to be professional. They teach you how to shoot, but you can teach someone how to shoot, you know, how to handle the camera, but to be a professional, to act as a professional, uh, that's another, like another big game. You know? Yeah. So I hear what you're saying in the sense that there's, there's in terms of like, for example, if you're a printer, you need to be qualified to be a printer. Mm, you, yeah. you cannot just rock up and say, I can print. No, you know, you need s some sort kind of. of uh, yeah, but, but, you know, it's, you, how do you know that person is a professional? Like, is there a standard? Who tells someone that he's a professional? Like, is there a qualifying body which says this person is professional? Like, for uh, example, you have to, if I'm, if I am, uh, if I want to be a project manager, mm -hmm. I, I can be certified as a project manager. I study that course. I go for a course and you get certified. You're writing an exam. You get certified as yeah. a certified project manager. But, uh, do you but that means that, that you are a professional. Yeah, exactly. So, oh. so because there is a certifying body, which tests my knowledge. Yeah, but doesn't mean that you're a professional. You know, you have the knowledge, but doesn't mean that you know how to act with this knowledge. Exactly, but I, I get what what you're trying to say, but what, what, 
what I'm saying is that in, in photography, because the entry barrier is very low, there's more people coming in and consequently they drive the price down because mm -hmm. there's somebody else to do it for cheap, literally for zero. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so, but is how, how do, why is that a rating system or a point system or somewhere so, or something to sort of filter out the bad photographers? So, and because, you know, you, you, for example, you go on Google, you get reviews. Yeah. So that's one way of certifying that, you know, maybe that guy is better or good but, but what i'm saying is there's, there's no there's no like a uh um it's a, somebody it's a really to tell you fine line yeah to see it yeah i understand and i agree with you but the thing is because of people like people normal customer normal client will come at you and they want to see the beauty of the image right as a photographer we all should read the image not just seeing the image and our customers, because they're going to do this automatically, that's how human brain works. But uh, as you said, you can do some, get some certification in project manager, printer, whatever. I know, and I can tell you, a lot of printers, a lot of photographers, they have the best cameras in the world or they work around the best printers in the world and they only use the standard profile, you know? So means like I can tell you today I was shooting a marathon and, uh, the weather was all right, but wasn't perfect for, I would say beginning or intermediary guy, because we have clouds, the light was changed all the time. And if I tell you, you have to control your white balance manually, not using anything automatically. Uh, um, I. The guy who was shooting the same event, he was struggling to do it because he has no clue. He, he knows like we have the white balance, but he doesn't know. It's, it's more like for me, maybe it's because of years working around. It's visual. You don't need to give me the camera and I can tell you the setup before you give me the camera on which lens I need to use for this shooting. I can let you know before I get the camera in my hands. You know, but this is experience, this is studying, a lot of studying, a lot of testing, a lot of try. I like to do this a lot. So to see, to say that someone's a professional, in my opinion, involve way more than have a good camera or photographing every single day. As we know, people around New Zealand, around us that photograph every, every single day. How much money or he, does he know how much cost each click of his camera? He knows how much depreciation has his gears during like a month or during like the whole year. That's mm -hmm. all these little things that people doesn't really need to know. I mean, the customers or clients, they don't need to know. Uh, we all should know because you invest some money like in this microphone or this headphone or, or in my computer, whatever. And we should know, okay, I need to pay this in this amount of time. I need to pay this new lens or this new camera in this time, right? I need to make jobs. I need to make sure that I'll get jobs to run all these costs easily and pay me fair. Because uh, what I see in these days, people surviving with photography. As a designer, as pretty much everyone, but I mean, in our area, uh, people surviving. Uh, and I think that's a big mistake. Because I can charge you a thousand dollars today for one shoot, but if you just Google someone, the same shoot, some, you're going to find someone to do for 500, 150, 80 dollars. Okay. So tell me something. Uh, yeah. uh, so you have a very strong opinion of, of that you have to be a professional and you need to know what's your worth. And how much yeah. you can charge, right? Yeah. Um, right. But how do you get to that stage, or how did you get to that stage? What no? What what work did you do in order to equip yourself with that knowledge? 
quite a word. Uh, I think studying, you know, a lot as uh, I'm, one of my degrees was uh, technology of photography, uh, helped me a lot, but not in terms of costing, knowing the costing. All the other things, like I was always researching, studying, uh, asking the big guys, I mean, I mean, big names from US, from Brazil, from Europe. I was sending emails. Oh, how much did you charge for this photo shoot? How much? Why did you charge the price? Some guys, they were never going to tell you, right? Because our like photographer ego is quite high, as we spoke in the other time. Uh, but always like, of course, try to get a fair price in terms of the industry, right? What the big guy's charging, what I'm capable to do, I can charge that. Beautiful. All right. But I was always researching and I still doing this because times changed a lot after, before COVID and after COVID, it's a different uh, game. Um, people are not keen to invest a lot of money in, in photographers, uh, in campaigns as well. Um, so that's how I got this knowledge. So I was create Excel, um, tables with my numbers. I know this camera here, like I have two different cameras, all Nikon as I spoke before, um, but I know for, um, some kind of, uh, shooting that I will be doing, I'm going to use my best camera or some, I'm going to use like my worst camera. I mean, worst camera doesn't mean that I'm not capable to do this job. Right. Um, because these days, uh, people having this mirrorless, amazing technology, but if you give a DSLR, right, the digital. DSLR camera, they have no idea how to work with. If you give a manual camera or manual lens or manual, uh, or analog camera, they still not know it and they should know because if you know the basics, everything in life, that's what I believe will be easy for you to step up, right? If you know the basic, how to print, if you know the basic, how to create a website, that will be easy because you know the bottom. If you know the bottom, it's easy for you to step up. That's what I believe. So do you think, uh, because you have a degree in the technology of photography and you know the science behind it so well, do you think it, uh, it pays to go to a photography school? Will that make you, you know, you know, stand you a better chance of becoming a more professional, professional, uh, uh photographer. Uh, do, you, do you think that's, that will make the, make the difference? I would say that's a lot of course around, uh, the world, uh, about photography, but mainly they're going to teach you how to use the gears, the camera, mainly I would say, or I would suggest don't go to another course of photography or another workshop with another photography, go around business guys and ask them, how did they charge an hour? How did they do to control the money? How did they make the money? You know, uh, like my other degree was in uh, business administration. That still helped. I, I honestly, I didn't know why I did that, but I understand that that's make me understand more the administration part of any business or my business. So if I'm working as I do at the printing business, so I like to know the whole process. I don't like just to be there in one department. Of course, I'm hired to be in one department, but if I know the whole process, someone can come to me and say, Hey, uh, I need to print this size. I need to, this going to be outdoor. Um, what should I do? So I know already how to act and how to help this, this person, uh, and make sure that Everything goes smoothly and through all the way until we finish printing. Because that's yeah. the other problem. We, we receive photos. Uh, I receive sometimes photos from other photographers, but people taking photos if uh, ISO 120 something thousand because, oh, but my camera is capable to do it. Yeah. The thing is digitally, everything you can do it. You use mid journey, you can create a photography, but when, Tim, when you have to cross these to a digital, uh, sorry, analogic that you're going to convert this for a print 2D, that's a way different game. 
Right. So, so from what I understand, what you're saying is that one needs to understand the business of photography in order to become a better photographer or a better commercial photographer. Will that uh, do a re if you reverse engineer mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the technology vis-a-vis -vis what you're charging? Will that make you a better photographer? Uh, no, I don't think so because I know a lot of amazing photographers, amazing guys that knows how to, to click, mm. but they don't know how to charge, right? So that is a balance that you have to find. So, okay, I can invest in a lot of workshops in a lot of years, but if I do invest in workshops of, of uh, business investments, you know, uh, or anything around marketing, blah, 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 that for sure will help you. Because what I believe and what I learn, my photograph is going to be creating my brain before I take the photos, of course, but my photograph is going to be created from everything that I study, everything that, every single movie that I watch it, every kind of music that I listen. So I listen every, every style of music. Uh, I watch any kind of move. Of course, normally I try to analyze to, you know, to be more uh, technical, to watch the movie. That's me. And uh, since I, I start in this journey as a photographer, not a broad, broad photographer, but I mean, in this uh, beautiful world, uh, one guy told me, if you want to become a good photographer, you have to see or to watch or whatever, minimum 100 photos per day, right? So I have a lot of websites, a lot of people that I like, and not just the one that I like, but people that I see, wow, that's a good photo. That's something that I can, you know, I don't need to copy, but that's everything's going to go and get stuck in your brain, your subconscious. And then one day you're going to do it. Oh shit, I have this idea, but it's not your idea. That was already stuck in your brain. That's what I believe. If you want to become a better photographer, minimum 10, uh, 100 photos per day. If you can do 1,000, that will be way better. But 100 is fine because you just start loading a lot of like photos, a lot of images, whatever kind of image. Oh, I just like fashion. No, don't, don't look only fashion photos. Look, uh, war photos, look, uh, um, photojournalism, for look, wedding photos, because that's the thing that I decided to change to not say I'm only commercial photographer because I realized sometimes as a commercial photographer, I need to do something more creepy or I need to use some sort of language or style that I saw in a newspaper style, you know, like more photojournalism. Uh, why people, uh, I would say 10, 15 years ago, start say, oh, if you hire me to shoot your wedding, I'm going to shoot as a photojournalist. You know, people are not going to be looking to the camera. That's bullshit. Always was like this, but the names looked more like, oh, people will be more free to to do whatever they want and if they will have a guy here they're going to be like a paparazzi. Oh, shit. No, that's always was like that, but the names just change it. Um, yeah, that's, a, I would say, a, a, a good recommendation. Look for a lot of photos. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's it's almost like what you're teaching the AI, machine learning. <laughs> Pretty much. That's our brain. That's, yeah. our, that's a principle. That's our brain. Uh, more information that you have, more the better it is. Yeah, yeah, better it is. You know, yeah. I, I studied a lot of different stuff. I studied IT. I studied spirituality. I studied man, so many things. My brain doesn't stop. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night just to uh, write a note that I don't want to forget because my brain is just like boom, boom, boom. I don't recommend to get in this point, but that's me. You know. Right. Okay. L let's get into. Um... The the thing that I like about your photography mm. is your lighting. The way it differs from photograph to photograph. Um, like other photograph photographers, I see it's it's, it's pretty much this. At least on the feed, they only put uh, those. You know, it's it's a certain style, right? Mm -hmm. And all all the images have the same kind of color palette, oh, yeah. lighting, etc. 
it's probably they want to say that that, that that's their signature style but with your photography there's a lot of variety so there's a lot of moody photogra- photographs like for example those gym shots of the uh, the bodybuilder mm-hmm. that very nicely shot very sensual but also it shows off the 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 structure the muscles that tonality is really amazing thank you and plus i mean the, the other uh, image of your kid that you shot that white background mm-hmm. that's really cool <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, variety in in lighting i yeah. see how did that come about Uh, honestly, I think because seeing or uh, the amount of photographs that I, I see per day in my free time, I'm just like my phone, my computer every night before I go to bed, uh, brings me and of course I'm try, um, to do something different in every single shoot. If you came to me, ask me, I want to do the same shoot for the same photo shoot as my friend did with you. I would refuse and say, no, sorry, I don't do that. That's my style, right? Uh, I don't like this, um, this kind of clone, you know, people came to because they saw someone, they, they see like a beautiful fashion model, uh, with a little beautiful dress and they, oh, I want to do equal. I want to do the same shit. I don't like this. Uh, in terms of lightning, um, it's all about studying. All about like understanding which kind of light I need to show up or to hide something, mainly in body. That's what I, I, I was uh, studying a lot when I, I started my photography journey. Uh, understand because when you have clothes, when you have like a lot of things around, it's way easier, right? But when you have someone naked in front of you and, uh, and you have to show the best part of the body, that's the challenge. Just one second. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of study. Uh, like I don't, I know how to work with my lights, but I don't know who's going to be my next model. And that's the big key for me. I need to understand. I need to, um, pretty much read the body before I decide I want to use this light. Normally my clients came to me and say, use your creativity, right? Because they know me previously. So use your creativity. So, and for me, that's, that's what I really want. I don't want to be one more guy pressing the button because you have a art director or a mic director say, I want a photo like this. I want a photo like that. Of course. Sometimes you sort of close some doors because people just wanted you to be one guy pushing the button. Uh, but I know doing the way that I do makes me happy. That's for me, it's important. Like uh, from the photo shoot that you said about the bodybuilding girl, um, she chose, I think the deal was 10 photos, right? The package was 10 photos. And she just ended up buying another 80 photos. For my pocket, was amazing and for her was better too uh it's it's more like when you understand the light when you start like just seeing because you, you can do this you can practice this don't look at someone's uh, face try not before try to catch first where's the highlights where the light came from how this light's gonna have to uh, make this body or this face change if you move a bit or towards, you know, or up or down. That's a re- another amazing exercise that I normally uh, send to my um, students and when I do workshops, uh, you're going to get a flashlight or your phone flashlight, whatever, and you're going to have this uh, apple and you have to understand. You have, because if you want to shoot body, if you want to, be a good photographer. I'm not saying that I'm a really good photographer, but I'm trying my best to be. You have to understand light. That's the principle. That's the beginning. So that's the basic that a lot of people doesn't know. A lot of course, a lot of workshops, they never tell you. 
So if you, one day, probably that's going to happen soon, uh, I'm going to do a workshop with you. I'm going to let you know, how do I catch the light first? And then I start building around this body or this face or around this product. Uh, and you see, it's, it's look like for me, it's easy these days, but it, it will be easy for you because like a little trick that every single teacher or every single photographer should tell everyone, you know, and, but of course, more than, you know, that's what I believe more, more, the uh, technical side that, you know, crazy, you're going to go because you're going to start seeing like, you start seeing the lights come towards my, my hair now. And then after that, I start seeing, oh, but look at, if you have the light just a little bit, like five degrees to, to, towards his back, that will shape better. That will shape better for the hair, but we still have to see the whole picture now. Then we start seeing the face. So you see the light first, and then you start seeing the whole complexity of the, the face or body or product, whatever. So yeah, building my portfolio, just to finish uh, your question, um, it's always the variety of uh, showing how cable and let's say how far I can go. But for me, how far is still far, way far to finish what I want, you know. Right. Just one second. I'm going sure. to take a photograph, screenshot of us talking. <laughs> all right okay okay i got it so um that's pretty interesting what but was there any kind of inspiration for you to get started on this this whole exploration journey like were there was there any like a turning point or was there any uh, other artist who was so brilliant with this lighting work that inspired you to say, Hey, I need to go down this path. I need to explore this. Yeah. Further. Um, I think studying the philosophy of photography as I did and I, as I still do it, uh, all the big names who invented the photograph, right? Uh, for me, they always inspired. They always said, if you research or if you read some of them books, they always say, see light first, right? Forget about the beauty, forget about the composition, see the light. From the light on, you can start building your composition. And, uh, that's my inspiration. Like the, I mean, when I say big names, I'd say Olivia Toscani, Ansel Adams, all the old, all the real, I mean. I, I know we have a lot of real photographers, but I mean, those guys were the one who discovered, you know, like, and for me, uh, I still believe that they are the best ones. We, we have amazing photographers in these days, but they were, they were like the ones who told us like, see the light. And a lot of people don't see the light. There are a lot of people see the viewfinder, they Man, for me, it, it's still like, uh, I'm not so old, but it's still hard to see like good photographs just watching the, the screen, not putting like the eye on the viewfinder or, you know, like, it's just like, man, I hope I will never get in this point, but maybe, you know, the, the, this yeah. progress, this things for me, is just yeah. like, uh, Wait, it's, all, it's also, it's a very profound question, right? A very philosophical yeah. question. See the light. <laughs> see the light. True. See the light. That's, that's true, bro. Uh, like, um, to create anything as a videographer or as a photographer, you need light, yeah. you know? Not, and not if, light. if you don't have, just... and the thing is, if you don't have that amount of light that you'd like, you need to know how to play the basics, shutter, ISO, you know, aperture, not just putting automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to add? I mean, I, I, I think I've asked all the questions that I oh, want cool. to do. Um, oh, first of all, I want to say thank you again for this invitation. Uh, no, and, uh, what I would say is keep studying, keep practicing. Um, 
I believe I, I, for me, it's hard to delete any photo, right? But in these days, the files sometimes too big. You have to choose a little bit. When I do commercial photos, of course, I, I should like less than hundred photos, sometimes a bit more, but, um, make sure that you understand the process, like not just get your camera point to someone else or whatever and start to press the button because if you keep doing this, okay, it's fun. You get your money, but there's few guys around that they will start appear. One thing that I forgot to mention in our first meeting was I, I never tried and I still not to be a famous photographer or to be a recognized photographer from the main public or clients, but I always try to be recognized from the big names as already happening. Um, guys that I have thousand percent of respect. They sometimes email me to say, oh, amazing photo. Like I had photo that I shoot three, four weeks ago, I got hundred. 184, 85,000 likes. And for me, it's cool. Of course, my ego feels like, oh my God, that's pretty cool. But one guy who said a few words to me in private, that was, that was the thing, you know, because, um, there's a lot of guys who invest a lot of money to be a social influence, uh, uh, you know, uh, photographer, uh, new modern world. And for me, it's more like, who knows my name? I don't want everyone knows my name. I want some people knows my name. And as a commercial photographer, as a wedding photographer, uh, it's, it's a bit different game. But if you get in the point, if you position yourself to be recognized or to work with the luxury customers or the high end customers, you have to, to, to point like, okay, my lens or whatever my eyes or my business, I want to point to this direction. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's my, my advice. Uh, know what you want. Uh, stop doing fucking uh, shit Instagram photos because a lot of Instagram photos are fake. Uh, and, uh, people already know that, you know, yeah. like, because then you got to send your files and people say, Whoa, oh. I saw Instagram. You have hundred posts on Instagram that looked amazing, but the ones that you gave me look like anyone could do it. You know, no. um, yeah. that's my advice. Cool. Keep shooting. Sounds See good. the light. See the light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>